so one of the reasons I started the SketchUp Essentials in the first place is that I'm fascinated with 3D technology in general, right? I love anything having to do with 3D. That's why I have a SketchUp channel, a Blender channel, um, all those different things because I love working in 3D. And so there's new and emerging technologies that are coming out that are really kind of changing the way that we're working in 3D. One of those that I'm really enjoying working with is LiDAR scanning. So LiDAR scanning basically bounces light waves at surfaces and it measures the reaction time Time, um, in order to determine shapes and distances of objects. In addition, currently LiDAR scanning also picks up images to apply over top of the LiDAR data that it picks up. So this can be very valuable for a lot of different reasons, but the biggest is you can use it to both generate 3D models of objects, but also to measure 3D objects because the information you're getting is accurate in the real world space. So there's a lot of fun applications for this in 3D. And so up until recently, the technology didn't really exist for like everyday people like you and me to actually do anything with this because it required really complicated, expensive equipment. But with the newer versions of the iPhone, some of those actually have LiDAR built in and there are apps that you can use in order to pick up that real world data and actually use it in your 3D models. So there's multiple different apps that you can use in order to generate this LiDAR data. The one that I generally find myself using is called Polycam. So Polycam is an app that you can use on your iPhone. There's actually a free version that you can use in order to capture the data and then a paid version that allows you to export different kinds of data from the app. And so this isn't like sponsored by Polycam or anything. That's just the app that I happen to use in order to do this. There's other apps as well, but this is the one that I'm using. All right, so I'd break the usage of this tool up into two categories. The first is actually capturing meshes to use inside your 3D models. The second is capturing meshes and capturing spaces in order to use as reference. So the meshes first. And so you can take this data and actually export it into SketchUp. Like for example, this is a male building that I just scanned while I was out on a walk. And um, I scanned the whole thing on the inside so you can see kind of what that might look like. Um, I did it a little bit quickly because I didn't want to be the weird guy walking around scanning the male building. So let's take a look at what this might look like if we bring it into SketchUp right now. So. Um, with the paid version of Polycam, you can export to different file types. Well, in this case, I'm gonna bring this in as a DAE because SketchUp accepts DAE files. So we're gonna download the file and then we're gonna bring it into SketchUp. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna export this as a zip file that contains the model data and the texture images associated with this. So if we right click on this, we do an extract all like this. So we're gonna do an extract Notice how it's gonna extract this to a folder, which we can then double click in and see those different images, as well as the actual model file itself. And so you can see how it kind of packed all of these texture image files into these files right here. So um, you don't really need to know too much about this other than this is where the texture images are. But let's jump over into SketchUp real quick. So we're just gonna do a file import. In this case, we're just gonna select that DAE file that we downloaded and we're gonna import it into SketchUp. So we're gonna click on the import button. That could take a minute depending on the size of the scan that you're trying to bring in. Okay, and so this is why I don't necessarily recommend actually working with the scan data at the moment. Now you can, and there are tools like Scan Essentials that are designed to help you with this. Um, I haven't been able to use them too much up to this point, so that may be a different video, but there are tools to help you with point modeling like this, but notice how when you bring that in as a mesh, it's just kind of all over the place, right? Like you've got the information in here and it's actually pretty good. And so one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything and then I'm gonna right click and I have selection toys installed in SketchUp. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select all the edges and I'm just gonna toggle them to um, soft that way, now I'm not seeing all the edges that are in here. And so once you get those edges cleaned up, um, you can see how this gives you some interesting and valuable information, right? So if I look at this, right, I can see things like where um, where the wood transitions to the stone, and I can see like where the mailboxes are and other things like that. Now it's not ultra high resolution, which is probably a good thing because otherwise these could be massive files. But the problem with these is they're really hard to model on top of, right? 
So in addition to this being really heavy, it's also really hard to model on top of. And so the problem with this is this actually picks up all the imperfections in things um, that are in the real world as well. So things like the pavement slope, it's actually picking that up, which is great from a realism standpoint, but it's not necessarily great from a modeling standpoint because it's really hard to come in here and actually model on top of this, right? So if I wanted to model like sidewalk on top of this, um, you just start getting faces kind of merging with other faces. You can definitely do it. Um, you can group that geometry and actually come in here and work with it, but it can be a little bit clunky. So at the moment, I'm not using this data a ton for actually bringing into my models, just because the amount of cleanup and other work that has to happen in order to get it to where I need it to be um, is a little bit more than I'm willing to do right now. Um, that's not to say there's not value in LiDAR scanning. Uh, we'll get there in a second, but there are tools out there like Scan Essentials from SketchUp, as well as uh, programs like Undet that are designed to help you start working from point clouds. So you can take the data and export it as a point cloud from Polycam and bring that in. I have not done a ton of this, but there are tools out there that are designed to help you with this. But the reason there's tools out there is because it can be really difficult to model directly from the scan data. Now, for me, the value in LiDAR scanning at the moment is getting a single accurate 3D picture of a space that's actually like real world accurate that I can measure from and use as a reference. Because I'm sure we've all had the situation where we've gone out and we've measured something and we forgot to measure something out, something else. And before you know it, you made like 10 different trips out there to measure different things. This takes away all of that because you can take a space, you can just scan it. And then you've got this 3D accurate picture of this that you can actually measure from. So this is a scan of a barn that I did and specifically the tax space of a barn. So it's where we keep like saddles and other things like that, right? And so there's a ton of stuff in here um, and it's just kind of a clunky space um, in order to do any work in, right? Well, let's say that I wanted to figure out how big this space is so I can put like mats down on the ground right here, right? Um, so measuring this could be a little bit difficult with all of the stuff in here. Like we could definitely work around this and get a tape measure across and all of that. But what I was able to do instead is I was actually able to walk into the space and I was able to pick up a scan of it using the LiDAR on my iPhone. Um, and this probably took me about 10 seconds. So something like that. Well, what I can do is inside of the Polycam app, and you can do this in SketchUp as well, I can actually use the measure function in order to figure out real world distances. So for me, and I know some of you hate this, but I'm going to switch this to Imperial. So for me, I can come in here and I can click on this wall right here and I can move my mouse across and I can click on this wall and I can see what the actual distance across that space is. And you can do this in multiple different times and multiple different locations just to verify that your measurements are correct, right? So like, for example, if I do this the same height over here, I can figure that this is going to be about eight and a half feet. And I can draw another point to the back wall right here and I can see that the space is 11 feet long. So I know that I need to get enough mats to fill up an eight and a half foot space by an 11 foot space. And what's great about this is I don't have to worry about forgetting anything in the space and then going back and measuring it later, which I'm sure we've all done. I do it all the time. What this does is this gives me a complete picture that I can get on my phone, I can upload it online, and then I can come back and I can actually model from it really quickly. So I can also figure out things like if I wanted to figure out how far this door was from the wall, I could do that. So I could measure the width of my door in here. Um, and you're really just kind of limited by the amount of time you spend scanning the space. So for example, I scan this space moving forward, but if I look around at the backside right here, there's a gap because I didn't walk around to scan the backside. All right. So this is how I'm currently using LiDAR scanning, but I'd love to hear from you on how you're trying to use LiDAR scanning in your workflow. What you think about this, where you think it's going. I think it's super exciting. and I just enjoy working with cool stuff like this. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.